Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at calculating WAC. If you're not familiar with WAC, that's the weighted average cost of capital. If you're a finance student in university or something like that, it's something you're probably um, hear a lot about, but we'll cover today how to calculate it from a kind of a theoretical or a, I guess, the perspective of, a, of an academic. Um, so it's a question I get asked a lot on my models, how I come up with the WAC, but in reality, when you're doing a DCF for yourself, the WAC should be the required rate of return that you require as an investor. And you should pick that based off how risky you believe the company is. And so I usually pick somewhere between like an eight and a 12%, just depending if I think it's a pretty safe company or pretty um, volatile and risky company. So here's a template, feel free to download it, but I'll walk you through all the numbers here um, and you know how we kind of really calculate the WAC and how everything flows through here. So market value of equity, this is really just the market cap of the company. Um, so if we come here to summary, right, we'll see market cap 2.265 trillion. Um, so I guess that should actually be a five. Um, and then if we look at the market value of debt, this is really coming from their SEC filings. So if you pull up the most recent 10K or 10Q, um, we can see here, and this is actually their K and their Q, they have it broken out, but 98 of term debt. And then where's the, uh, commercial paper. I don't know if they showed in here. Um, in the key, I guess here we go. We can just take this number, I guess. Um, 106. So let's see, we have, we'll just put the 106 here. Um, cost of debt. This part's tough. They don't break out kind of everything for you. We know we have 87 billion between 0.3 and, and 4.65. And then, you know, some other smaller amounts between 0.5 to 2.5, 0.7. So really, you know, I mean, you could do some sort of like weighted average between these smaller portions and then these percentages. The problem is it's like a range here. So we don't know exactly how much of this 87 billion is 0.375 versus 4.65. So I've just picked an arbitrary number of four. Um, because this was all issued 2013 to 19, um, rates really dropped off, I think kind of starting in 2020. Um, so 4% is probably fine. And even if you change this, because they have such little debt in comparison to equity, it's not really going to change the overall whack, um, cost of equity. So this is actually calculated through CAPM. Another great thing if you're a finance student, um, you'll probably get to learn this sooner or later, or you already have, but what we need is we need the risk-free rate the expected return of the market and then the beta of our company. Um, so the treasury yield 2.3%. This is the risk-free pulled this here. I, I did the 30 year. Um, reason being is from a company's perspective, it's kind of like the long-term risk-free rate for them. They're in this for the long term. If you're building a DCF and you want to calculate the company's whack and you're doing a five year time frame, right? You could come in and you could pull the, the five year rate really just whatever time period you're looking at for the WAC you're calculating. Expected return of the market chose 8%. I mean, this isn't scientific. This is a Wikip or a Investopedia article saying since 1957, when all 500 stocks were included, it's been roughly 8%. I think in school we used seven to 9%, just depending on the professor. Um, so pretty straightforward. Beta, uh, we calculate this. If you haven't calculated beta, I'll show you how real quick. Um, so here's what you need. You need Apple's close. You need then the monthly percentage change, the spy close and the monthly percentage change. So I did a five year beta, um, with based off monthly returns, you could do a one year off daily returns. Um, you could change things however you, however you felt necessary. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways. It's not super materially different unless if the company has performed drastically different recently than in the past or something. Um, but for this data, if you're curious on where to pull it, head on over to Yahoo Finance. You're going to hit historical data and then the time period. You can pick five year. You can do daily, weekly, monthly, hit apply, and then you'll hit download. It'll just download it into a Excel file for you. And then you'll take the close price. Um, and you can do the same thing for SPY. So the ETF is what I use to pull the return of the S&P 500. Historical data, same thing. 
change this five year monthly apply download take the closing value paste it in and then the percentage change this is just a formula it's going to be most recent divided by prior period minus one that gets you the percentage change and then you need to calculate the variance of spy which is just the var function and then the covariance of apple and spy um, so covariance of apple comma spy and then you're going to divide the covariance divided by the variance. And that's going to get you your beta 1.18. And if we look at um, Yahoo Finance, actually, they report beta as well. They have a 1.22. So my guess is maybe they were using the adjusted close, um, but 1.18, you're pretty dang close. And if you're not familiar with beta, what this means is if the S&P increases 1% or decreases 1%, on average, you know, Apple is increasing 1.18% or decreasing 1.18%. It's just like how much it fluctuates in comparison to the broader market. Um, so that's the beta. You know, all of this kind of goes in, get your cost of equity here. So if you're not familiar with the CAPM model, um, it's going to be your, your risk-free rate plus beta times return in the market less treasury yield. So what this is saying is if the market's expected to return 8%, but the risk-free is 2.3, you know, the risk premium there is 5.7%. So if the market is expected to return 5.7% above and beyond treasury yield, um, and then we can take our beta. So if the market returns 5.7, then we expect to return 1.18% of that or times that um, because we're kind of we we accelerate or decelerate more than the market as a whole and then you're going to add back the risk-free treasury right there and you get nine percent so while the market's expected to return eight apple would be expected to return nine in the same time frame that we're looking at um, based off these treasury yields from there take the cost of equity it's going to go back in here and then we're going to calculate WAC. Um, WAC is just kind of the proportion of your debt and your equity and then the cost of those assets um, combined to get your overall cost. So for here, you'll see if you follow the formula, it's going to be market value of equity divided by the market value of equity and debt. So kind of the total cap structure. And then from there, you're going to multiply that by your cost of equity. So that'll get you something slightly less than 9%. And then you're going to add that to cost of debt divided by the total cap structure. So to get you that proportion times that by your cost of debt, and then you're actually going to multiply that by um, corporate tax rate, one minus the corporate tax rate times your cost of debt. So your debt provides a tax shield, um, an interest tax shield in a sense from corporate earnings. So right, if you're paying interest on your debt, you're not paying taxes on it. So you get a little bit of a tax shield. Um, so you get a little bit of a, a discount to your cost of debt there because um, you're you know, in a sense, having some savings from the tax guy for the interest you pay on your debt. So that gets you your whack of 8.8%. Um, so if you had built a model or something like that, you could go plug that in and kind of see um, what kind of valuation you get based off Apple's cost of capital. Um, I hope you found this useful or interesting. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll, I'll get back to you. Thanks for tuning in.